Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. All right, well, we got to talk about this Dynamite show. You were there live. And how was the live experience? You know, it's funny because, like, I haven't seen the show on TV, and I, I usually don't like to do this, um, but I did. And um, so so it's like I really don't know that I can feel at all how the TV show is because I didn't see it on TV. I didn't see the announcement. Well, I didn't ask where the TV show. How was the live experience? Was it fun? Oh, yeah, it was a Good? fun show. It was a fun show, but, you know, I'm going to have fun at a wrestling show. I mean... Um, I mean, it, it wasn't like there were any super matches or anything like that. But I mean, as far as, you know, like like going to the building. And it's the same thing that I, I felt when I went into Oakland last year um, when they did a show is it's it, it you don't you go there. I mean, I've been to shows with hot promotions many, many times. And this was not that. I've been to shows with cold promotions, and this really wasn't that either. It was it was in between. Um, there was the only person who I, I would say to the crowd, I mean, Moxley is so in and out, and people didn't really, um, you know, I mean, that, that, that segment, that beatdown segment had some heat and everything. But you really didn't get a feel like it was just a big brawl. Um, Swerve backstage got, you know, Swerve got a big pop. But the biggest pop of anyone coming out was was Okada. And, I mean, even in the crowd, he was actually the one. You know, it's funny. The funny thing to me was is that you all hear like, um, oh, man, they've ruined Okada. They've ruined Okada. And it was like, you know, I mean, there was no, like, Jericho was didn't come out. He was... You know, if he was even there, you know, I mean, I think I think his thing was actually taped on Saturday anyway. But of the people there, Okada, and it was a babyface reaction. And when he was in the ring, I mean, it was like he had that aura of a superstar. Well, I think uh, that New Japan ran a lot of shows in the uh, San Jose area. And uh, I think a lot of the fans there kind of see him as a as a big star. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think he got a be he would have got a better reaction there than most places in the country, I would think, because Maybe. of how often they ran that area. Maybe that that could be that could be true, but he he did you know he was he definitely had the biggest one, and Jay White had a big reaction when his music played. He had a pretty big reaction, way more than I expected from him. Um, Same thing. Yeah. Well, I think he only did San Jose. God, I, I remember a match with Eddie Kingston. I don't know if he did. Oh, he had, he had a match with Ishii too. So, so he was here twice before. Yeah, but this is a diff, this was still a different crowd than that crowd. It really was. Um, the you know the crowd wasn't like the crowd would have been. Um, it like it was it it was a bigger crowd. It looked fine on I, I think on television at least in the building. It it did not come across. Like a small crowd, it would have been a great, great crowd down the street at San Jose State. It would have packed the building, um, and and probably made for a better atmosphere. But the atmosphere wasn't bad at all. It was it was fine. I mean, and um, I didn't really get like it wasn't really so much of a local flavor. Uh, the only you know I think you know they didn't bring out Hobbs. I don't even know if he was backstage. I'd never I didn't see him, but. Um, you know, the only local guy, um, well, Toa Leone is local, but nobody knows that. But um, the only local guy that I, were, you know, was, was Aaron Solo. And he he kind of got a good reaction. I mean, more than like an enhancement guy reaction. You know, the, the probably the funniest crowd reaction was his match. He was out there and um, they were singing that European Bailey song to him. You know, because Bailey and him, you know, they'd broken up. But but they were boyfriend girlfriend for many years and actually engaged at one point, and when the fans started saying that he started cracking up, and I think his opponents started cracking up too. So that was like um, the two funniest moments were that, and the other one was um, this was for Rampage. Um, the uh, MXM Collection wrestled Private Party, and. There was a, a there were a couple of saves. Okay, so so there's a save, right? You know where um, MXM had it won, and then the private party guy made a save, and that happened a second time. And Brennan Williams or Mace, Mason Madden just kind of looks and just goes, "That that's that was the second save." Yes, that's the that, hidden rule. The hidden rule. I thought that was, 
I mean, nobody got it. Nobody in the crowd got it, but I, it cracked me up. The way, he did it like just deadpan. It's just like, like you broke the the hidden rule, you know, from WWE. So, aside from that, you know, it's just it's just a show. Um, I I I didn't uh, I didn't sense it would be a big rating show at all with that lineup. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. I mean, maybe I'm wrong on this one. Um, and you never know based on competition anyway. Um, I'm not, I haven't looked into what's, what baseball's on and everything, but, um, you know, so, uh, I guess, you know, match wise, like there was no, like I said, there was, there was no blow away match. The best match live to me was Mercedes and Queen Amanada. Queen Amanada is good. I mean, for her level of experience, she is freaking good. I mean, it wasn't just Mercedes carrying her either. She moves well. I mean, it wasn't a perfect match or anything, but for you know she she and she's got a, a good a good look a good presence good confidence um you know she just doesn't have the name but um i could see like i see i could see a future with her i mean i don't know how big but um but work-wise man she's she's way above which where she should be well, the show opened up with the John Moxley promos. He was leaving after the pay-per-view, and he said someone had to be responsible. Things got out of control. He said he had a dream for AEW that people could come and be the best version of themselves. Wrestling gave him everything, and he wanted others to have the same experience. But there are 150 people on the roster. He hates what it has become. Ego's out of control. People dancing and partying. He can't stand it anymore. So he said you can come with us if you want. If not, run while you can. A new paradigm. The new paradigm is that everyone works for him now. And this led to uh, them actually being all over the show like the NWO, beating everybody up. That's basically mm -hmm. what it was. Then we had Adam Cole coming out, total babyface promo. And they just kind of blew off the whole Roderick Strong and Kingdom thing. He just, very much, he just said, I love you guys, but I said I had to be on my own. So that was kind of the end of that. And then he cut a long promo burying MJF, talking about how he was trash. Everybody hated him. MJF was a scared little boy. And uh, and he so... Talked about, he talked about his uh, two hair surgeries. Yes. And finally, he just said, listen, I hate you. Let's not waste time. Get your ass out here so we can fight right now. So MJF appears on the big screen, and he says, everyone's looking to... Uh, See the top star trip up after years of letting people in. I'm never going to let it happen again. But I did let you in. Let my guard down. You made me pay for it. Because of you, I can never trust again. None of this is my fault. It's all yours, he said. You'll never get me in that ring. You will die with a void of unfulfilled vengeance, and you can thank me later. And then Cole said, well, you can't hide. One of these days, I'm going to get my hands on you and give you the ass beating of a lifetime. So... It's probably full gear. The story is he wants to match, and MGF doesn't want to give it to him. Yeah, so that way they can stretch it out. Full gear is November 23rd, so it's over a month away. Yep. So maybe they'll drag it out longer, but I, I figure MJF, I mean, MJF's, you would think, would be wrestling on a show in the New York area. So, I'm, you know, I'm going to guess that that's the date. So we had a the, Jericho promo. So the, the, deal, the deal there, Adam Cole had a really tough story to tell. Because, I mean, this story, this is a tough one. You know, I think given the circumstances, he probably did about as good as you could do. I mean, the people were fine with him. I mean, they absolutely cheered him. He he got one of the bigger reactions coming out, and it was a complete babyface reaction. There were no boos or anything like that. Um, the people did boo Max um, pretty completely. I mean, when his music hit, there was the little pop. You know, then him not being there, you know, because it was a tape, they booed that. But when he was doing his promo, they booed. So, um, you know, it's it's like as as much as there there are gaping holes from start to finish in the storyline, um, you know, it it seems the crowd is is um, I don't know they're they're in tune with the new one. You know, is I guess the best way I could. Well, at the it. end of the day, regardless of who was a babyface and a heel, when this uh, injury happened and when they got split apart, they hated each other, and so they're back hating each other again. Yeah, but and now, but the, now, when's the yeah? Well, I mean, what's the alternative? Like 
Max was, was always going to see be a baby face. Yeah, yeah. No, there and was Adam no, Cole's going to come back, and the people are going to boo him. Yeah, there. You there was, know, when Adam Cole comes back, he's going to get cheered no matter what. Absolutely. Max is already a heel, so and you ter- either go with what you've got right now, or you just flip it again, which well, would make no sense and wouldn't work. Well, well, you couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't. I mean, you could make Max a baby face, but it would be a terrible idea right now. It's way too soon. So, I mean, doing it this way. If you're going to do it, this is the only way to do it. But man, you know, it's, 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 it, you know, from a continuity logic standpoint, it's a tough one, but like you said, like there lo- logically it's the, you know, it's either, either you just keep them apart, which would be stupid because they did that big angle a year ago and they never had a match. So it makes sense for them to go against each other. Um, you know, with other people involved. I mean, it certainly still makes sense for Max and Garcia, you know, to do something as well. But, um, you know, and they, that may go to, the, to that one later. But if you're going to do Max and Adam Cole, Max has to be a heel right now, or should be. And, you know, the and the, again, when Adam Cole came out, it was it was all cheers. And the people didn't, you know, but he's still, the explanation... I think he did about as good a job with the explanations he could do, but that was a that was a tough situation to try to logically explain the um, inexplicable being like a total complete heel and now a baby face when he was the one who did the turn, he was the one who did the double cross, but now he's the baby face in the situation. He should just come out and said, you know what? At the time, a lot of people were mad at me for screwing you and double crossing you, but look at you now. You're an asshole. I was right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, he sort of tried to say that. He said everyone hates you. Yeah. And for a good reason. I mean, that's that's essentially what he said. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.